Follow these steps to set up your outdoor vending machine. Your machine may look a bit different than you see in this video, but the tips and principles in this video will still apply to your outdoor machine. Be sure to have the following tools with you when setting up the machine. A screwdriver or drill with a number two Phillips head. A bubble level for leveling the machine. A Vennet wrench leveling tool. A pry bar a crowbar or large screwdriver and hammer to split and remove the shipping skids, a box cutter or blade to cut open the packaging, and a receptacle tester. Your machine was thoroughly inspected before leaving the factory and the delivery carrier has accepted responsibility for this machine. It is very important that you inspect the exterior of all cartons for damage upon receipt from the freight line. Damage in transit, although infrequent, does happen. Nearly all damage in transit can be determined from a visual inspection of cartons. Look for any damage to the cardboard corners. The machines are shipped in clear plastic. Look for tears in the plastic and inspect them closely. Take photos of any external damage to packaging before removing it. If this visual inspection reveals nothing, then the machine has probably been received in good condition. If any carton is received in a damaged condition, it is very important that you follow these steps. First, note any damage on the freight line's delivery receipt. Specify where the damage is located. Take photos of the damage. Second, contact the factory at 800-247-1787 for additional instructions. Send photos of the damage to damage at witchern.com. Include serial number and tracking number of shipment. Again, please inspect all equipment thoroughly before signing for it and before the driver leaves. Any questions pertaining to damaged equipment should be referred to the factory. You can find the keys to your machine in the coin return slot in the lower right area on the front of your machine. Unwrap the keys from the poly bag. Unlock the cabinet door here. One of the first things you should do when opening your door for the first time is to find the back screen protector in the bottom of the cabinet. Unwrap the back screen protector and the four securing screws so you can fix it in the back of the machine. Use the four Phillips screws to secure the back screen protector here in these holes. You need to make sure the protector is directing the air up like this if the machine is an inside model and down if the machine is an outdoor model. Locate the power cord here on the back of the machine. Loosen these four Phillips screws to remove the cover and place it off to the side. Now take out the power cord. Make sure the power cord is securely and properly plugged into the machine here. During transit, the vibration can cause this to become unplugged. Now place the power cover back on here. The power cord goes out through the cover here. Attach the cord to the back of the machine here before plugging it into the wall. Your machine is shipped on wood skids that need to be removed. Remove 12 Phillips screws, three on each corner of the shipping cradle. You can then remove these wooden boards. Using a hammer and a large screwdriver or pry bar, split the skids by inserting the wedge into the provided separation slot and applying pressure to front or back. Then use the hammer to knock the wood away from the legs. Because of the weight of the machine, it may be helpful to slightly raise the machine or for someone to push on the side of the machine, as this will help take the pressure off as you separate the wood from the legs. You can then dispose of the wood boards and metal washers. After removing the skids and before leveling, make sure the legs have a half inch between the black part and the base of the leg. Raise the leg base by turning it counterclockwise. Do this for all six of the legs. The machine must be positioned at least four inches from the wall. This is very important for good airflow so the refrigeration unit can operate efficiently. These optional foam blocks can be helpful when positioning your machine. Be sure to mount them vertically and not horizontally. It's important to remember to make sure your machine power button is off before plugging the machine into the wall. Also, before plugging the power cord to the wall socket, the integrity of the main electrical supply must be checked for correct polarity, presence of a good ground, and the correct voltage. 
These checks should be repeated at six month intervals with routine safety electrical testing of the vendor itself. If the receptacle is not properly grounded or polarized, contact a licensed electrician to correctly polarize and or ground the receptacle to ensure safe operation. For proper operation of any equipment utilizing electronically controlled components, the equipment should be placed on an isolated or dedicated noise-free circuit properly polarized and grounded. Refer to the electrical specifications in your service manual to determine circuit amperage and protection. Now plug in your machine. This red light shows that your machine is receiving power. To help ensure proper operation of your machine, it is critical the machine is level. Using a standard level, ensure the machine is level all the way around. Make sure the level is on the cabinet and not the door. Make sure the machine is level side to side and front to back. Place the level on the top of the cabinet, raise the level until the bubble is in the middle so you know what side to raise or lower. Adjust the machine using an adjustable wrench or this leveling tool. Lower the machine by turning the leg clockwise and raise the machine by turning the leg counterclockwise. We recommend adjusting the machine in small increments and then checking the bubble level. When the machine is level, check to make sure all the legs are touching the ground. In this instance, this leg was adjusted and is holding more weight than the front leg. And on the right side, the front leg was adjusted, so this leg will need to be lowered. This machine is equipped to receive payments through the PayRange app. In order to receive PayRange payments, you will need to set up an account on PayRange's website and activate the machine's device. You can remove the PayRange label from your machine if you choose to not accept PayRange purchases. On the bottom of the cabinet, you will also find a packet with the machine service manual and snap-on leg covers. When attaching the leg covers, move them up so they are touching the top of the legs. In the bottom of the cabinet, you will also find product crowders and product pushers. Now we will set up the coin mechanism and bill validator. Push this black tab to pull out your coin mech. You can use your thumb to release your coin tubes. Here is the coin return lever which can clear coin jams at the top of the coin mech. Up here, push the blue button on the top to release the bill box. Bills your machine receives will be stored here. Push the silver lever to remove the bill track and access this area on the bottom where bills can get jammed. Your bill box slides back into place like this. Now in order to program your machine for your coin mechanism and bill validator, we will place the machine in service mode by pressing this button on the control board. When the machine is in service mode, any coins put into the machine will go to the coin tubes. The control board keeps track of the value of the coins going into the machine. Also, it's important to note that the lights on the bill validator here are not flashing. When the lights on the bill validator are flashing, it means that it is ready to receive a bill. The machine will not take a bill now because there are no coins in the coin tubes and no change can be given for bills. We will now fill the coin tubes with change. We recommend filling the machine with a roll of pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and dollar coins. You can see the amount of money you've placed in the machine by going over to the accounting menu, then historical, all items, press enter. On the bottom here, you can see the value of coins in the machine. Press the star key to get out of service mode. You will see the bill validator lights are now flashing. This means there are enough coins in the machine for the machine to take a bill. Putting as many coins as you can into the machine will help your machine be able to take more bills. Your machine is programmed from the factory to take $1 and $5 bills. To accept $10 bills, find the bill validator. Remove the bill box and use a thin tool to press this button so that the bill validator will enter programming mode. Be careful because the bill validator's programming mode does time out. On the front of the machine, insert the $10 bill. The lights on the bill validator will flash 10 times. 
it should flash 10 times when programming any bill value. Now the bill validator is ready to accept $10 bills, but the control board is not. Place the machine in service mode. Then go to the options menu, then cash options. The password is 2314. Check number 3 to accept $10 bills. Check 4 if you would like to accept $20 bills. Press pound to save. Press star to back up. Do not place bottles in dual coils. We recommend using a tray with 9 selections across, not 10. Only use 10 selection trays for small diameter beverages. Place 6 count coils at 7 o'clock to prevent bottles from falling out when the tray is pulled out. 16 ounce water bottles can be placed in 7 count spirals. When loading candy, be sure to choose a coil count that suits the product. There must be no interference when inserting the item into the coil. The item should not be too loose and be supported to provide good presentation. Place the coils at 7 o'clock. Load sandwiches standing up. Make sure coils are at 7 o'clock on the left and 5 o'clock on the right. This also works for wedge sandwiches. Using 10 count coils for mini donuts can help you fit 70 to 80 packages in one tray. Place the donuts in the coils vertically. Here we are using 9 count coils for snacks. To make sure the coils are correct, load 3 products, lift up the bags. If the coils come up, it's too tight. The snacks should be able to be removed from the coils. Snacks that are shoved into coils that are too tight for them have air released from the bag and become stale faster. Canadian large serving snack bags are bigger and need 9 count coils. US large serving snacks generally are okay with 10 count coils. 5 count dual coils are great for food platters and salads in these plastic containers. To replace a coil, pop out the gray coupler from the tray, then twist out the coil from the coupler. The end of the coil needs to be snapped in this position on the coupler. When you place the coil and coupler back on the tray and into the motor, make sure the end of the coil here is in the right vending position. We recommend 5 o'clock for right coils and 7 o'clock for left coils. Place the coil coupler into the motor in the back by pressing it into position. To install a dual motor, begin by removing the wires from the single motors using needle nose pliers. Then lift them off the tray. Place the dual motor on the tray. Reattach the wires. The colored wire, in this case purple, goes here. Use the wire closest to the motor. The pink wire goes on the connector here. This extra wire you won't be using. End coupler back on the tray and into the motor. Make sure the end of the coil here is in the right vending position. We recommend 5 o'clock for right coils and 7 o'clock for left coils. Place the coil coupler into the motor in the back by pressing it into position. Product risers prevent the coil from riding up on a product like this. To install a product riser, pop out the gray coupler from the tray motor. Twist the coupler off from the coil. Take the screw from the riser kit and secure it in the coupler center hole like this. Place the coupler back into the tray motor. Now put the riser on the screw in the back of the tray and make sure the front of the coil is in place here. Finally insert two screws in the front of the tray here.